want to do a video on how to defeat armored vehicles here in the United States. So this video has absolutely nothing to do with the fact that the ATF is uh, really pulling some unconstitutional crap right now with uh, pistol braces and uh, polymer 80 and stuff like that. This is just some, this is a video that uh, I've been meaning to put out and uh, I just happen to have some time to do it right now. But uh, first thing I want to go over is understanding why so this video isn't for you know overseas terrorists or whatever to to uh to watch and figure out how to defeat um u.s military armored vehicles overseas those guys have like you know rpg 7s and uh, anti-tank rifles and um you know stuff like that what i'm going to be talking about is just how civilians here in the united states you know, if there's any kind of uh, widespread gun confiscation or something like that, how everyday citizens can battle and fight against uh, armored vehicles. So, um, ladies, gentlemen, am I often forgotten? 88 mics, let's get into it. Um, is it possible? Yes. I mean, it's, it's actually extremely simple. Um, the key is, is you're not necessarily defeating the armor what you're doing is you have to work on defeating the guys that are inside it. Um, and, and the way you do that is, is by either immobilizing the vehicle or causing the vehicle to not move any further just because the people inside it can no longer see out. Okay? Um, so let's see. Um, another thing I want to go over is the, the a big key to this is you want to be the hunter instead of the hunted. So if you're just chilling at the house and one of these rolls up and they're gonna you know confiscate all their guns or whatever, um, it's probably too late. Okay, this is something that you know you and maybe your group, you know you might be proactive with um, if you know if there's gun confiscations happening but they haven't hit y'all yet. Um, you know, maybe you can start hunting down um, the, the armored vehicles in your area and start disabling them. So one thing you have to keep in mind is replacement parts. So, you know, a lot of uh, these armored vehicles, whether they're uh, tracked APCs or MRAPs and stuff like that, they're, they're coming from the military. The military has a surplus of these, okay? And they also have all the logistics in order to repair these things, okay? So they have tons of uh, replacement parts and stuff like that. So what I'm going to be talking about, again, is not necessarily for fighting against the military. It's more for fighting against uh, tyrannical law enforcement, okay? Um, we'll take MRAPs, for example, because they're starting to become really common here in the United States for uh, law enforcement to use. Um but there's only a few boneyards within the United States that have the MRAPs in them, okay? Uh, MRAP stands for, uh, of course, Mine Resistant Ambush Protected Vehicle, okay? Um, when I say boneyard, there's not many, if not any at all, parts on an MRAP that you can just go to an auto parts store and, and purchase. Um, when it comes down to even oil filters and hoses and belts and stuff like that, um, they have to come from U.S. military boneyards. Okay, I know that because I used to manage a parts store, and my local uh, police department came in to try to buy parts for their MRAP, and they just they they couldn't do it. They physically couldn't do it. Um, you know, we even tried to go to other auto parts stores that were not through the company that we were with try to system and nobody carries these parts. They're not even special order items, okay? So if you start disabling the parts on an MRAP, and I'm assuming other military vehicles that are similar, um, they're gonna have a rough time trying to keep these vehicles going, okay? So let's see, uh, keep in mind that the windows are small, okay? If, if, if they can't see through the windows, they're not gonna be driving down the road, they're gonna stop. Okay, because um, they're worried about you know driving in the ditch, driving into uh, uh, private property like houses and buildings and stuff like that. If they can't see, they're not going to move. They're going to stop. Okay, so in order to disable the windows, you can start either shooting at them and try to spider web those windows so that they can't see out. You can use this with you know 
uh, pistol calibers, uh, rifle calibers, if you have uh, ar uh, armor piercing, um, obviously armor piercing is going to cause even a further uh, spider web effect. Um, depending on what caliber armor piercing, you might even be able to actually start uh, vibe checking and popping some holes in those ballistic windows um, after a few shots. I'm not going to go over into what calibers those are, but uh, you know that's something you can research by yourself. Um, but if if you're not using guns, if you want to be a lot quieter, you can do stuff like you know fill water balloons full of like uh, use motor oil or honey, and then throw some glitter and sand in there, and throw those up against those windows, and it's going to stick to those windows after the balloon pops. Of course, they're not going to be able to see out. Okay, uh, you know, and with the with the sand and the glitter and stuff like that, even on the front when they're trying to activate their, their windshield wipers, um, it's just going to smear. Okay, um, let's see. So the wheel wells, wheel wells are excellent if you have an immobilized vehicle; it's not moving. Start chucking Molotov cocktails, or otherwise try to set those uh, the wheel wells or the, the tires inside the wheel wells on fire. Um, for some weird reason. Human beings don't like being inside giant iron vehicles that are on fire because it tends to heat up inside. They want to get the heck out. Okay. Um, let's see. So MRAPs, just talk more about MRAPs. Uh, they're top heavy and have a V-shaped hull. Okay. So the V-shaped hull doesn't really mean too much for, for us. You know, we're not, you know, making, uh, probably not making um, IEDs or anything like that. Um, but the fact that they're top heavy, that can be used for our benefit, okay? Um, they can be tipped over with, uh, you know, say, uh, bulldozers or uh, larger vehicles and stuff like that, like uh, semi trucks. Um, you can, um, you know, like for example, in in Hong Kong during the Hong Kong protests, they didn't have MRAPs, but they had uh, the Chinese government had other heavily armored. Um, vehicles that they're putting their police in and trying to break up these protests. What the folks in Hong Kong did is they started gluing rocks and bricks to the road, making it super uneven. Okay, so it was difficult for them to be able to control the steering wheel as it's uh, driving down the road. Um, what you can do is you can um, put rubble in the road or um, you know, put trees in the road or whatever. And while they may try to be able to climb up over it, if you set it up a certain way, um, it can lose balance and tip on its side. Once it's tipped on its side, obviously it's not going anywhere. It's it's going to need a, a large recovery vehicle in order to put it back up on its uh, up on its tires. Um, another thing, John, keep in mind, is on MRAPs they have uh, brake chambers in the back. Now, uh, you know, law enforcement has gotten wise to this and they started to put armor around the, the back of the brake chambers okay but if you get close enough say if it's just sitting in the yard or if it's immobilized or whatever because say for example you messed up the windows and not moving anywhere you can run up and in the gaps in the armor start popping rounds in the brake chambers the way that the brake chambers work on an MRAP is, is once they leak the brakes will lock down because that has a uh, air brake system just like a semi truck okay when it's locked down like that, it's not moving. It's not going anywhere, okay? Um, it has to either get loaded up onto a flatbed with a crane or it has to get repaired right then and there. They have to, you know, slam new brake chambers in or whatever. And it's really, really difficult to do that when they're under fire. So just keep that in mind. Um, I'll enclose a picture of where the brake chambers are, of course. Um, let's see. If you have the ability to, when you're landscaping around your house... You can put uh, what's called V ditches um, around your house or in key locations, and what those V ditches will do—they're just the same thing that they were used in World War II to stop tanks. Okay, where the vehicle will go down in the ditch and it can't climb back out, and because all of its weight is forward, it can't back up either. All right. Um, let's see. 
Keep in mind that they are up armored, so you know no matter how much small arms fire you shoot at it, you're probably not going to be able to puncture the hull. Well, they do have run flat tires, so no matter how much you sit there and unload at the tires, you're still going to be able to roll at least for a while. Um, it's better just to try to make it immobile by trying to defeat the people that are inside. Um, you know through the various ways that I've talked about, than actually try to kill the people inside. Um, and you may not want to kill the people inside anyways. It just depends on, you know, if you're thin blue line or whatever. Um, keep in mind that most armored vehicles, including the track ones, are, are actually difficult to maneuver, especially in tight alleyways or narrow driveways. So a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, you know, freedom fighters or whatever, when they're fighting against armored vehicles, they'll try to get an armored vehicle to follow them down, say, a narrow alleyway or something like that. And then they'll try to box them in. Um, when they're boxed in with, say, you know, a dump truck that pulls in front of them and then uh, a, a bulldozer, an excavator or something pulls in behind them, you know, armored vehicles typically have a lot of horsepower and a lot of weight that they can move stuff around, but it's still going to be a pain for them to try to get in or out with those large vehicles parked in the way. Um, and what they may consider trying to do is either just stay there and not move and wait for help basically and in that time you know your friends down the way they can you know escape or whatever um but uh just a way to at least slow down a large armored vehicle like that um let's see the biggest thing is that i want to end with this is you know if there is ever any kind of uh widespread tyranny a gun confiscation or anything like that and you know the american people ever decide to stand up it's going to be all about a war of attrition okay when i say war of attrition we have to cost the government money that's what the government cares about they don't care about lives you know uh again it just depends on if you're thin blue line or not but um, you know just killing tyrannical police officers is not gonna is not gonna end uh, a prohibition on guns or, or whatever it's it's that's not how it works you have to cost the government large amounts of money and that's how uh that's how the american people would win a war especially if if you know the government's using armored vehicles and stuff like that so anyways um i appreciate y'all watching if you enjoyed this video give me a like subscribe ring the bell for further content and uh, drop a comment in the comments if you want to talk smack and say i'm such a jerk for talking about talking about you know defeating law enforcement vehicles that's fine feel free thanks